Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence with us. As we go into the Word, we thank you that you have something for us. We set our hearts to receive what you have for us. Holy Spirit, anoint me with the ability to speak clearly and articulately to communicate the heart of God to your people. I pray that, Lord, as I speak, they will hear you. They will experience you. So purify my thoughts, purify these words, sanctify these words, cause them, it is your breath on these words that gives them life. I thank you for life being dispensed today, to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalm 18, Psalm 18, Psalm 18. Psalm 18, verse 33. Repeat after me. He makes my feet, makes my feet. Like, hinds feet. like hinds feet, able to stand, able to stand. Firmly, firmly, or make progress, or make progress. On, the on the dangerous heights of testing, of testing. And, the and the trouble. He sets me securely sets me upon secure. my high places. My Shall we read that together once again? Uh, one, two, three, uh, repeat after me. He makes my feet makes my like Heinz feet, like feet, able to stand firmly to stand and, firm make and make progress on the dangerous heights, the dangerous heights of, testing of testing and trouble. And trouble. He sets me securely sets me upon my high places. Praise God. This is the scripture we are standing on this year. This is the scripture that we are believing God and honing in on this year. And I encourage you to, to make this the theme of your heart. Yeah. That this year, uh, uh, we're standing on this and believing that you're going to see significant advancement. Amen. I'm praying that in every area of your life, in your career, you will move yes. forward. Amen. In your health, significant Amen. advancement. Yes. We declare in your family, significant advancement. Amen. In your relationships, in, your, in every area of your life, we are declaring over you that the Lord will cause you to make significant progress. Yes. Someone declare after me, this is my year, is my year. Of, significant of significant advancement. advancement. Please, I hope that the only time that, that you are declaring it beyond these times that I'm making you. Right? Yeah. I hope that you are. Um, because, you know, it's one thing for me to get you to say something. It's another thing when you start to say it. Yes. The transformation happens not, not purely when I say it, but when you start to say it and you believe it for yourself. Amen. Amen. So just randomly walking through your day, this is my year Amen. of significant advancement. You face a challenge you used to face last year and um, you have the urge to run like you ran last time. Say, so, no, this time he makes my feet like high feet. I will find a way to scale over this wall. Uh, you know, last year, there were, there were, last season, there will be something that used to run at you like a troop. You know, the anxiety will be coming and you know you're going to do something silly. Or no, this time, he said, no, he gives me, with, his, with, with my God, I can run against the truth. I can overcome anything that the enemy is throwing at me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You might fall the first or the second time, but I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time before you start scaling that wall. Yeah. Someone say, this is my year of significant advancement. Come on, just give God praise if you believe this year you're moving forward. Hallelujah. But notice that it is God who makes your feet like Heinz feet, right? In order for this to happen, he makes your feet. There is a, there is a work that he does on you. He changes the, your makeup. He changes the way that you are set up. He makes your feet and they become different to what they were before. He makes your feet like Heinz feet, and because of this, you are able to advance and make progress spiritually, uh, physically, wherever, in, what, in whichever sense you, you're looking to make progress. I want to give you two instructions from this before we move along. Number one, look to God for your significant advancement. Yes. This is very important because when we hear the promise of God, oftentimes the temptation is to begin to chase advancement. Right? The temptation is that, is that we, begin to, we begin to pursue the promise of advancement, but notice that the way that the promise of advancement, the, pro the promise of progress comes, is because the Lord does something to you. He makes your feet like Heinz feet. 
right? There is a work he does in you. Before you start going for that promotion, go for God. Before you start looking to make progress in that area of your relationship, let your face be in the book. Right? Because it is him that does what he needs to do to bring about the progress. The progress is not going to come. The advancement is not going to come because of your skill set. It's not going to become, of course, there is a place for that. And we'll look at, oh, by the way, Servant King Academy is back this Tuesday. Praise God. 8 p.m. You want to join online? We're going to be on, 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 on YouTube. We're going to be talking about the, some of the, the principles that govern this kind of progress in every area of our lives. So you want to join that at 8 p.m. on, on YouTube. But, but, but look at this. I want you to make the Lord your priority. Yes. Right? Make seeking his face your priority. We don't lean on our own understanding. We are looking to him. We're looking to lean on him this year because the God of advancement has a plan for you. The promise of advancement depends primarily on the God of advancement making your feet like hinds feet. Yeah. Right? So don't try to run with your normal setup. Go to him, and as he changes you, he will change the way you see stuff. He will change your perspective. He will change the way you've been doing it. He will challenge different areas of your life. It is in those challenges, it is as you face those things in the presence of God, that he makes your feet what it needs to be to move forward. Okay? Advance in your pursuit of him, and you will advance in your life. Are you guys with me? Because my confidence that we will progress is not based on the evaluation of my skill set or the evaluation of my connections. It is based on the fact that the God we serve is interested and invested in my progression. He is interested and invested in you moving forward. How many people know God wants you to move forward? Yeah. All right? It is his desire that you move forward. And because he is invested in your progression, it, the scriptures puts it this way, that promotion does not come from the east or from the west or from the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. So if you are after promotion of any kind, if you're after moving forward of any kind, don't look to the east, don't look to the west, don't look to the south, look to the Lord. Yes. Tell your neighbor, look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. Right? So that's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to understand that significant advancement will come because of advancement in your pursuit of the Lord. Because he is the one who makes your feet, he changes and makes you what you need to be in order to advance. If you're with me so far, say amen. amen. The number two thing I want to, the instruction I want to give you from that scripture is also that there is going to be a need for you to partner with God in advancing. Hallelujah. Right? There is going to be a need for you to partner with God in advancing. Partner with him, number one, in letting him make your feet. Like Heinz feet. Yeah. In other words, God is going to challenge you about certain things, certain ways that you are set up, mm -hmm. certain ways of behaving, certain ways of thinking. He's going to challenge your thinking and your thoughts and your attitudes and your posture towards certain things. And he's doing that because he wants to make you. Yeah. Everyone? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's like when, when the potter is, um, is, is trying to make a pot. They will crush it down. They will destroy. They will make it. It's not going to break you in terms of destroy you. Amen. But what he is doing is he breaks down certain ways of thinking. There are ways of thinking, ways of behaving that were great enough to bring you here. But if you're going to move forward, the potter will need to pour some water on you, make the clay wet, kind of squish it all together again, yeah. make it look like a little bit messy, and then he begins to rebuild. Yeah. Amen. That is him making you. Right? Yeah. And so what, what have we got to do if we're going to, we can't just declare. Yes. Right? right? Yeah. We declare. But, but, but as we declare, what we're also going to have to do is to be in the presence of God and allow him to make your feet like Heinz feet. Yeah. Let him make you the kind of person 
You know, as, I, as, I, as we're believing God for, for, you know, I'm believing God that, that, that this place is already too small for us. Yeah. I'm believing God that, you know, that, that this world is in need. Uh, and I'm not even uh, ashamed to say this. This world is in need of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so, so we make no apologies for wanting to reach everybody. We make no apologies for a bigger space. We make no apologies for reaching more people. We make no apologies for, for people coming in here. We make no apologies for that. But before I pray for that, my biggest prayer is make me a, a pastor who has the capacity for 2,000. Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. Come on, clap, 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 clap. It's okay, it's okay, okay? And if you ever wonder what to pray for, if you ever wonder what to pray for us, I ask you to pray that for us. Amen. Because, because, because there is no lack. Jesus said one time, I have so much to share with you, but, but you, you don't have the capacity to bear it now. God wants to do so much in our lives, and a lot of times it's the makeup that we have, which was good for a, a last season, but not necessary or not, not essential for the next season, requires reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And so if you are going to partner with God, we've got to allow him to make your feet what it needs to be to go on those high places. Hallelujah. Come on, someone put your right hand and say, Lord, I allow you to make me. Lord, I allow you to make me. Come on, close your eyes. You, you said it because I asked you. Why don't you use your own words right now and say, Lord, make me. Lord. In your own words, say, Lord, I yield myself to you. Whatever you want of me, I, I surrender myself to you. This is so important. This is profound. I surrender myself, transform me, make me who I need to be for the promise of significant advancement. Amen. So the first thing we want him to do is to partner with him. We need to understand that we ought to partner with him to let him make us who we need to be to move forward in the way that he has for us. Number two, it is also partner, partnering with him to let him lead us. Right? Because he is the one who leads us on that path that you need to go. Remember Ephesians chapter 2 that says there are these, he has, he has created these paths for us to walk in. Right? This part beforehand for us to walk in and to leave, live the good life. The psalmist then comes in Psalm 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And as a shepherd, he says, he leads me beside still waters. You see, life is a journey and God wants to lead you. Okay? He wants to lead you. If you're going to make progress... In, 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 in line with the agenda of God, we're going to have to, number one, let him make you. Number two, let him lead you. Amen. Okay? And he, won't, he will never force you. He will, you he, uh, uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is that we need submission. We need to yield to him. He's not a dictator. He doesn't force you. That's why people can still go to hell. Yeah. Not because he wants to, but because he, he wants you to choose. Is how he has created you. Are you with me so far? Yeah. So, so uh, one of the things we're, we're subjecting ourselves to, we're giving ourselves to, is letting the Lord lead you. Amen. Okay? So I want to talk, talk about how we're going to partner with God, right? Some, some other fundamental things that are necessary to partner with God, who is this God of progress. The God who is invested in your progress, who is invested in your advancement. God doesn't want you stuck in that job forever. He wants you to move forward. God doesn't want your marriage stuck in that stalemate. Forever. No, he wants you to move forward. God doesn't want you to be on this level of income forever. No, he wants you to move forward. God doesn't want you um, uh, uh, um, sort of suffering with this situation, this sickness, this disease, this. No, he wants you to move forward. He has a plan for your advancement. Amen. Someone say, God has a plan for my advancement. So here is how we're going to partner with the God of progress. Let's look at some examples in scripture. Some of them we'll look at in detail. Some we'll just glance over. Number one way that we're going to partner with, you know, I've, I've talked about two and now I'm saying number one. But let's call this number three then. Right? Ways that we're going to partner with God is, is there is going to be a need, if you're taking those, make sure you write this down, to trust him. Amen. 
That's right. We cannot effectively partner with God to move forward if we don't learn to trust him. Yeah. Trust is the willingness to lean on the Lord and not on our own understanding. Yeah. I define trust as advanced faith. Yeah. Right? Or as mature faith. Right? First of all, we put our faith in God. We take him at his word, and then we see his goodness over and over and over again. And because we see his goodness, and we are honest enough to look back and see the goodness of God, then we can start to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Trust is the willingness to lean on the Lord and not, our, not on our own understanding. You, you, you get to the place of trusting God by being willing to have faith in God over and over and over again. Now here is the one reason, main reason you need to trust God. You need to trust God because sometimes advancement doesn't look like moving, you know, like, like you are advancement. Advancement. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> advancement. <laughs> advancement doesn't, sometimes it doesn't look like advancement. I'm not going to say that again. You know what I mean. Okay, so, so you look at this picture, the picture I've used for this backdrop, right? There is what many of us have in mind as advancement is the guy climbing those defined steps. That's what we have in mind. It is after this, I go to this. After this, I go to this. After this, I go to this. Come on. After, after this, this, I go, go to this. this. After, after this, this, I go to this. After, after this, this, I go to this. And we just want to keep going. Prince, hope you're too serious. Come on, right? <laughs> right? We, 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 we just see that. That's all we see. But, but, but the reality of life is that oftentimes advancement looks like that's right. <laughs> Can you see the amens going down? Yeah. Right? You will have after this. After this. But, but advancement oftentimes look like this. It looks like Joseph. Right? Joseph has a dream. I have a dream. All of these, um, these sheaves are bowing to me. All of your stars are bowing to my star, which is the brightest one, and, and it looks good. But, but, and so it goes, it goes from there, goes up, it's looking good, before you know it, bam, in a pit. And he's wondering, okay, pastor, I thought you said <laughs> this was my year of significant advancement. And then the time comes, he finds somebody comes and brings him out of the pit. Boom, he goes up. Okay, okay, I can see this now. I can see it. Before, you know, he's in Potiphar's house. He's promoted again. I can see the advancement. He testifies in church. <laughs> Hello, Christian. And before you know it, the next thing that happened, Potiphar's wife is accusing him. Bam! Bam. Prison. Yeah. Where is the advancement? Yeah, yeah, what's happening? What, what, what's cooking here? <laughs> right? What's going on? See, uh, um, last in November, I went to Nigeria. I went, uh, I went for, uh, to officiate a wedding, and I had the opportunity to spend less than 48 hours with my father. My father is in his 80s, and um, I had the time to spend with him. And, and now he's so into farming. He's, he, you know, he just every day just walks, walks cassava farms or planting yam or, or different things. So, so he, he naturally took me into these farms. I wish I could show you the video took me to this farm, it's like a cassava forest, mm -hmm. right? So he will park the car, there are these pathways, and then there is this expanse of like, it's a forest. And he'll park the farm, I say, the, the farm we're going to is there. I'm like, where? <laughs> it's there, where? It's like standing in the ocean, right? Just imagine standing in front of the ocean and say, we're going there. <laughs> Does that make sense? But, but, but here, is what, here is what I learned. He said, he said, walk with me. Just go behind me. In fact, the, the, the first one we went to, the, it was a bit of a swamp. So there was, there was water there. And he told me ahead of time, he says, look, in this place, sometimes it gets muddy. So I want you to be careful. Can I preach with this at the moment? He says, I want you to be careful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step my foot. And I want you to step where I step. Right? So, so, so here I am. He is going ahead of me. And what I'm doing is I am walking with him. Wherever he goes, I put my foot because somehow he has established that that place will not sink. Mm. Now, if you look all around me, it's muddy. It's, it, 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 there is every chance that I'm going to fall. 
right? And yet he says, step where I step. And then he takes me into, we're walking underneath these things. He, <laughs> if you see the video that I made, maybe I'll post it on Instagram. I put it up and you can see, you wouldn't even know that people are there. And how do you, how do you know which way, way you're going? But he knows exactly where he's taking me. He says, the place we're going, you see that tree over there? Oh, like 12 trees. How do you know the specific one? This is his farm. Oh. This is his farm. He knows this patch. He, he, he belongs here. He comes here every day. He's not panicking. The man worked me that day, man. He said, let's go see him. And, and, and we're talking under the sun, hot sun. I'm not talking about like, like, I'm talking like 32 hot. All right? And he, and, and he takes me and, and, and I realize my eyes are down, right? All I'm, all I'm looking for is where do I put my next foot? But he is leading me. Who am I following? I'm following him. Amen. I don't know where I'm going. In fact, when I look, I feel lost. Mm. When I look up and I look, I don't know the path. Mm. I don't know how we're going to come out of this. Mm. But when I look at him, I find my way. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Advancement sometimes, that's why I said advancement looks like this. It looks like this. It looks like you go to Potiphar's house. You think you're, you're doing well, you get promoted, you testify, you're excited, bam, back in prison. I pray that you won't go to prison this Amen. year, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and so it goes up again, and then, you know, in prison, you're promoted, right? It's going well. Years are going by, bam, 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 bam. And it's just, I, I, the point is this, that sometimes it doesn't look like you're moving forward, but you ought to know this, because God is leading you. Even the pit and the prison yeah. is all progression. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Even the worst thing the enemy, the, the worst plan the enemy had for you, it was not God's plan for him to go to prison. It was not God's plan for him to be in the pit. Hello, people. God used it, but that was not the plan. It was not God. God never planned for you to experience those things. It is because we're in a fallen world with an enemy who has ulterior motives that we end up in these kinds of experiences. And God, in his mercy, in his wisdom, in his goodness, uses all of these things. So sometimes the way from the pit to the palace looks like prison. It looks like being forgotten. But one thing is sure, when God has his hand on you, when he has given you a word, when he has a plan for your life, his plan will come to pass. He will do what he said. I'm trying to tell somebody this year the devil will try you. But you're going to laugh in the midst of your storm because you will know that my father is leading you. I, 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 walking through that, that, that bush, I'm looking at the muddy place and the enemy might say to you, you're going to fall into this thing. Yeah, but if I fall, I'm not here by myself. My daddy is here with me. He will pick me up and I will come out. So I'm not preoccupied with falling. He leads me. He leads me. So what is required now? I am required to trust him. I am required to trust him. Someone say, Lord, I trust you. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, I trust you. Let me tell you this because I want to move on to other things. If you would learn that the most important treasure that you have is not the advancement, if you would learn that it is God himself, did you hear me? Yes. The promise of God is not your best treasure. It's a treasure. But it's not your best treasure. God is your treasure. Amen. Oh, did you hear me? Because God is your treasure, you can be guaranteed that his perfect will will come to pass in your life. Amen? You will advance as you understand that God is my treasure. He is the one that I hold dear. He is my everything. As you keep your eyes on him in the ups and in the downs, he will see you through. Amen. Okay. This is not a good idea. Number two, are you guys with me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. this. Number two, hope in him. Yeah. Hope in him. Tell your neighbor, hope in him. Hope in, in him. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, he says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people. 
I have seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of, because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I have come and I, and, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians Hallelujah. and to bring them to a land flowing with, uh, uh, to bring them uh, from that land. Someone say, from that land. From that land. Praise yeah. God. He will bring you from that place to another place. Yeah. To bring them from that land to a good land. Yeah. Oh, someone say, God is taking me to a good land. God is taking me to a good land. Praise God. As I walk with my father through those bushes, one thing I'm confident of is that he is taking me to goodness. Mm. He is taking me, he, he has no evil plans for me. He is my father, just like we were singing this morning. He, the one who leads you is not just a random God somewhere. No, he is your father. He is leading you, and he's leading you to a good land. One more time, someone say, he leads me to a good land. Oh, come on, tell your soul this, because I know some of us have experiences of fathers who did not lead us to good. Some of us have experiences of pastors who did not lead us to good. Some of us have experiences of, of friends who did not lead us to a good place but know this about your God he is leading you to a good land amen, amen. he is leading you to a good land yes. to a land that is flowing with milk and honey that's me right to the place that's me too to the to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites see for years these guys the children of Israel they seem stuck in Egypt they seem stuck with those taskmasters. It seemed like they would always have these taskmasters. Generation after generation, they seem stuck. Some of you are dealing with things, and it feels like year after year, it's not shifting. So much so that even now, you're not making any declarations. You're not setting any hopes that anything will be different this year because you have seen this thing over and over and over again, and the people were just like that for 400 years. 400 years, they were in this place where they were stuck. But the Bible tells us that even before this happened, God had already released a word to their father Abraham to tell Abraham that your people will go into slavery, but I will bring them out. Amen. In other words, the promise of deliverance came before the slavery. Amen. That's right. Did you hear me? Before you got sick, God already did everything to promise you healing. Right? Soundness of mind came, the promise of the soundness of mind came because God knew that there will be a time when you will be tested, where you will be challenged with the, with the challenges you're facing with your mind. Are you with me so far? And so God gave Abraham a promise ahead of time. Right? He scheduled their deliverance before they went into slavery. Even before they were born. I need someone to know that your deliverance has already been put in the calendar. Your deliverance has already been set in place. Don't let the enemy lie to you and tell you that you are stuck here forever. One day, God will show up and he will demonstrate that he is still God in your life. I declare this is that day. I declare this is that day in your life where you will experience the deliverance of our God. And so for 400 years, generation after generation, Generation, they would rise up and they would cry to God. They would raise their voice in prayer to ask God to deliver them. Notice that when they, whatever was going, <laughs> we'll come down to you. <laughs> I know I'm processing too many, many thoughts at the same time. And so my computer starts to, <laughs> Amen. But, but notice that when it didn't seem like anything was happening, there were men and women who were crying out to God. While the taskmaster was, was being difficult, there were men and women who were crying out to God. I pray that God will raise amongst us a generation of people who will cry out to God. A bunch of people who will not be afraid, who will not be, be moved by how it looks. We will still cry out to God. Say, God, in spite of what we see in the news, we have heard of your fame. We have heard of your wonderful deeds. Renew them in our day. I pray that there, we will not be a generation of people who writes the church off because of all the scandals that you see and because of all the wild things that are going on no there are a generation of people who still believe that the church of Jesus Christ will march forward will build the kingdom we can do it well we will advance to the glory of God because these people were
were crying out. There would have been people who stopped praying. There would have been people who stopped calling out to God. There would have been people who quit crying out. And yet the scripture says one day God shows up. And he says to a man named Moses, notice that sometimes God talks to another person about your deliverance. Thank God. Amen. You're over here crying and he's having a conversation with Moses. He says to Moses, I have heard the cries of my people. He says, I have heard their cry. He says, first of all, he says, I have seen their oppression. Please know you're not by yourself. There is a God who sees. His name is El Roi. He he says, I have seen their oppression. Someone say, God sees me. Come on, say it again. Say, God sees me. He says, I have seen their oppression. I have heard their cry. And now I have come to deliver them. Glory be to God. He says, I have seen their oppression. I have heard their cry. And now I have come to deliver them. You might seem stuck right now. You might might seem like you've been left behind and left on the shelf. You might seem like all of your mates, people around your age group are farther ahead than you and you're comparing yourself to uh, your neighbor. You you need to stop all of that. Uh, Tell your neighbor, stop all of that. Right? Stop all of that going on. But you, you, you might feel like you are left behind. I might feel like this thing is not going to shift. But you need to know this. Even if even when you haven't seen your deliverance, right? Know this. God has seen me. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you listening to me? He has seen you. Amen. Even though you have not come out yet. Be assured of this. He has seen you. Amen. Even though you have not come out yet. Be assured of this. He has heard you. Glory be to God. He has heard me. He says, he says, I have seen them, I have heard them, and I have come to deliver them. This is that year that I truly believe the Lord will deliver you. I declare in the name of Jesus, this is my prayer and my faith for you. That in the areas where you feel stuck, that this will be the year where you not only have the confidence that God saw you, that you not only have the confidence that he heard you, but this will be that year where you will experience the mighty hand of God delivering you, moving you from that land to this land. Amen. Come on, somebody shout amen or clap or say something. And so, if you will partner with God, Even when it doesn't look like, I'm looking at this example because what we're doing is we're zooming up to see that even from from year one and in the middle of year 250 and even in year 324, God saw. Amen? God heard. And now he came. At the appointed time, he came to deliver. So here is what we're going to do whilst I'm in year 340. What am I going to do? I'm going to hope in him. That's right. I'm going to put my hope in him. A hope is a positive expectation of good. Amen. So I'm going to put my hope in him. I'm not going to look at the taskmaster mm. and look at the taskmaster. Because I see the taskmaster, I say I will never be delivered from this. Because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to look at the bill that you can't pay right now. And with your mouth declare, this is never going to change. Mm. He wants you to look at the pain in your body right now and with your mouth declare this will always be the same. He wants you to watch the news and see the terrible things that are happening in the church or happening in the world and and your heart is filled with, with hopelessness. Yet, the will of God is that you and I will know that there is a God who sees, there is a God who hears, and there is a God who delivers. Hallelujah. Our hope is in him. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me, church? Uh, uh, Psalm 37 verse 17 says, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from their distress and trouble. Amen. Psalm 130 verse 7 says, O oh, radiant city, it says yeah. Israel, but hey, yeah. radiant yeah. city. All Radiant City. Say any, any Radiant City. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Any Radiant City people in the house. Yeah. Look at the instruction. Hope in the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our hope is in the Lord. Yeah. We're not blind to the craziness that's happening around us. Yeah. We're not blind to how bad it is. But our hope is in the Lord. Yeah. The smile on our face. Yeah. The optimistic outlook that we have is not naive. It is based on the hope. Hallelujah. Our hope is in the Lord. Why? For with the Lord there is mercy. 
In other words, <laughs> worst case scenario is I got into a mess because I made a mistake. Mm. But yet, with the Lord, there is mercy. Yes. He says there is mercy, and with him uh, is abundant redemption. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hope in him. Amen. Come on, close your eyes. Yeah. Tell your soul, say, my soul, my soul. I will hope soul. in the Lord. In the Lord. Come on, tell your soul, tell your soul, let your soul hear you. Say, soul, soul. we will hope we will in the Lord. In the Lord. The Bible says in, in, in Isaiah 40, verse 27, it says, Why, O Jacob, do you say and declare, O Israel? Sorry, I'm going, going for it for, because of time. He said, Why, O Jacob, do you say and declare, O Israel, my way and my lot are hidden from the Lord, and my right hand is passed over without regard from my God? He says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and to the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases in strength. Amen. causing it uh, to multiply and make it abound. Uh, I'm, I'm reading from the Amplified, okay? It says, even the youth shall faint yeah. and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall. But there are those people, come on, any of those people in the house, what he says about those of us who will wait, he says, but those who wait on the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, let me tell you, you're not going to, you just have an opportunity to wait. It's not a delay, it's an opportunity to wait. It's not denial. It's an opportunity to wait. Yes. I know you've been believing God for this thing to show up, and it hasn't. But I need you to know that this is an opportunity to wait. Yes. Because those who wait upon the Lord, the Amplified says, those who expect, who look for, who hope in Him, they shall change That's me, right? and renew their strength yes. and power. Amen. And look at advancement. They shall lift their wings. I think, that I, I think that these people move from being ordinary people who walk with their feet. Because when they start waiting for the Lord, the Lord changes and he gives them wings. And suddenly, look at this, he says, he says they shall lift their wings. They have wings. Where did they get it from? God changed them. As you wait on God, he will change you. Can I, can I bring that? He will give you what you need for the next level. He will, he will change you. Some of you are rushing your change because you want the promise too quick. You are missing the point of the wait. In the wait, he gives you wings. Some of you are trying to attack things or, or heights that can only be attained by wings. You can't get there with wings, yeah. without wings. So when we wait, we are transformed. He changes them, and because he changes them in the wait, at the appointed time, they lift up their wings. Yeah. And the Bible says, they saw. Hallelujah, they saw. He says, they shall lift up their wings, and they will mount close to God as eagles. Mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They will not become tired. Amen. I said that is us. I said that is us. We will rise like wings. We will rise with our wings and rise. This year, you're not going to rise by by ducking and diving and conniving and cheating and yeah. no you're going to rise by waiting because right. as you wait he will change you yes. and as he changes you suddenly you're going to show up with supernatural ability oh. where you're soaring ah. don't, don't don't worry about the seasons of the way my god is working on me he's fixing some wings he is changing some attitudes he is giving me a new heart he is putting some wisdom in my bag he's giving me connections. He is doing what he needs to do. At the right time, I lift up my wings and I soar. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, wait. 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 Number three, are you still able to track with me? Yeah. I, I knew I over-prepared, but it's all good. Yeah. Number three, move with him. Yeah. Move with him. In Deuteronomy 1, 6, the Lord our God, he says this, the Lord our God said to, said to us in Horeb, you have dwelt long enough on this mountain. Oh, yes. He says, turn and take up your journey 
and go to the hill of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in Arabah, in the hill country, in the lowland, in the south, the Negev, and on the coast, the, 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 the land of the Canaanites and, the, and, and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the, great, the river Euphrates. He says, at some point, you've got to act. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. At some point, you've got to move. Yeah. Right? There is the waiting. And, and don't worry about when. Don't worry. We're not contradicting. We're saying on the one hand, wait, and on the other hand, move. In fact, there's a beautiful example um, in Exodus chapter 9. In Exodus chapter 9, what happens is that uh, the, the, the story is told. We won't read for time. The story is told that when they, when they pitch their tent, right, when they pitch the tent of the tabernacle, everyone with me so far? Please, okay? If you don't recognize what I'm saying, please just write the scripture down and go home and read it, okay? Mm -hmm. When they pitch the tabernacle or where God met them, there will be a cloud, the cloud of the Lord in the daytime. It will be a pillar of cloud that will gather, that will form over the tabernacle where they, have the, where, where, where they met with God, where Moses met with God. Okay? And then in the nighttime, it will be a pillar of fire. So what, what, what Exodus chapter 9 tells us is that, is that the, the people would watch the cloud. They would watch the fire. Right? So waiting depended on the cloud and the fire. But moving also depended on the cloud and the fire. So they would, if, if the cloud moved, once the cloud got up, there, there will be a time when the cloud lifts. If the cl they see the cloud lifting, everybody knows it's time to uproot your tent, pack up your family, let's start moving with the cloud. Amen? And the scripture says it doesn't matter. Sometimes the cloud will stay for two days. Sometimes it will stay for a month. Or sometimes it will stay for weeks. But whatever happened, they would wait on the cloud. Can I tell you, this is why you can't be using Instagram to determine whether you are doing well. Because the cloud might lift for them, but my cloud has not lifted. If I move on your step, on your instruction, I'm misstepping. So what am I to do? I am meant to keep my eyes locked on the cloud. In everything that I'm doing, as, they, as the kids are playing, parents are looking. As the, where the, where the, okay, we're good. The cloud is still there. Right? Because our eyes are on the cloud, our eyes are on the fire, our, de our, our decision on whether to wait or to move is based on the movement of the cloud. The worst thing we can do is to sit down when the cloud has moved. Mm. Amen? Do you know God, <laughs> and, and church, we have to be careful about this. I'm, I'm challenging myself on this. Mm. You know, especially when, 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 when I know in, in my own thinking and there are things that I know about the scripture, I know about the word, you know, I'm a word of faith kind of man. I'm, glory to God. I declare that I was brought up speaking the word. And so there, 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 are, there, there, are, there, are, there are things that we can get stuck in that was the will of God at a certain point, but the cloud is moving. You guys with me? It doesn't negate or take away the fact that that was good and that was right, but the cloud is moving. What we, what we always have to do is to make sure that we are not stuck on some previous glory. Mm. We're not stuck on the glory of how God did it for you in the past. Yeah. That now you're judging every other person. People are moving with the cloud. Mm. My point is this. We keep our eyes locked on the Lord. We keep our eyes locked on him to the best of your ability. And when the cloud moves, you move. Yeah. When he says, act on this, that's the time to act. Amen. When he says, be quiet, that's, that's right. the time to be quiet. Yeah. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Move when he moves, stop when he says to stop. Yeah. If you're with me so far, say amen. amen. I declare in this season, you will not be dull of hearing. Amen. I declare your eyes are working. Yeah. I declare your connection. This is why I, I'm unapologetic in encouraging you in this season to practice fast. Amen. amen. You understand that this is not a, an obligation. Even in scripture, do you know even in scripture, there, there is only one, one or two, one place actually where we see it is commanded in the law to fast. So even in the law, there was no commandment per se to fast. But we see all over scripture that every time people were looking to make wise decisions, every time people were looking to change their levels, they needed focus because we're so distracted. What it is is, is, is focus. I, I pray that this year you will live a focused life. Amen. That you will live a focused life because it takes focus. Imagine playing over here, doing another thing, and the cloud is lifting. Mm. 
because your eyes are not constantly looking. You are distracted sometimes by even something good. Amen. So we focus on him. As we keep our eyes on him, it would mean sometimes you wait and everyone is running past you. But you still wait. That is advancement. Because as you wait on him, he will lead you. Sometimes you're moving when everyone is quiet. You will need the courage to move because your eyes are on him. I pray that this year you will walk like a barefooted priest, carefully, with instruction, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we haven't got time to look at the other two, but write them down. Number, number four, fear him. Everyone say fear him. Fear him. To fear him is to have deep reverence and awe for him. Amen? The Bible says, um, Deuteronomy 5, 29, it says, Oh, that they had such a mind, um, uh, such a heart in them, to always fear me and to keep all my commandments. Why? That it may go well with them and their children forever. In other words, whatever you do, I would encourage you this year, don't play with God. Don't treat God as light. Right? I want to translate what it means to fear God. It's not to be afraid of Him, to be terrified of Him. To fear God is to give such weight to Him. It's like, like, like to be in awe of Him. Right? You know, you're, I don't know who, if you're into football or you're your, your favorite celebrity comes in and the way you're in awe because of the works, the things that you know they've done in your industry or and you're just in awe of them, that is reverence. That is fear. Have that for God. Don't treat the word of God lightly. Don't treat the things of God lightly. Amen? Fear of God is not, is not, is not seen in what you say. It's seen in the choices you make. It's seen in you saying, no, my body is the temple of the living God. I fear too much. I fear God. I reverence God too much to do things that he doesn't want me to do with my body. No, no, this person is a child of God. I fear God too much to treat them unkindly. Amen? Reverence God. Whatever you need to do to give weight to God, do that. And then the final thing I want to say is pray. Everyone say pray. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Talk to him about the promotion that you're thinking about. Talk to him about the anxiety that you're feeling in your heart. Pray about, about the child. Pray about the money. Pray, pray this. Whatever you do, pray. Your, the, the, the connection with God is a vital connection. Pray in the morning. Pray at night time. Pray for two hours. Pray for one minute. Pray. Whatever you do, pray. Amen? Because it is in prayer that I get to see when the cloud has lifted. It is in prayer that I get to see to stay. It is in prayer that we get the instruction for life. Prayer doesn't change things. God changes things. So we pray so that we can see the God who changes. Everyone, everyone with me? I know there is a bit of an... I, I, I feel in our generation, in our time, because of what God is doing, there is a cloud. The cloud has moved to a place where there is God is stirring a, a heart for prayer more than ever before in our time. And that's a brilliant thing. But I also believe that there is an idolization of prayer. There's an idolization of the process. The, the benefit of prayer is not in the prayer. The benefit of the prayer is in God. Everyone know that? So, so I, I think that the, the, the difference is that when you, when you realize that it is God you are after, then you will pray without ceasing. Yes. When it is impressing your fellow Christian, when it is so you can say, I pray for X amount of time, you will, you will stop when you think you're doing well. Are you guys with me? Yeah. When Christ is your pursuit, you will never stop praying. Right. You, you won't stop. You will keep going. The scripture says about, you're talking about fasting, the scripture says about Jesus, I'm done. The scripture says about Jesus that he fasted and he prayed, and then afterwards he got hungry. Did you hear that? <laughs> he fasted and he prayed, and then afterwards, look, I'm praying for that anointing. I, I, haven't, I haven't received it yet, but it's a goal, right? Do you know what Jesus, what that means? It means that Jesus was so occupied with the presence of God and so satisfied in his presence that he wasn't even hungry. It was when he looked away that he became hungry. That's the key for fasting. It's the key for fasting. Spend time looking for him. 
wish I could talk about that one day. Have you been blessed today? Yeah. Spirit of the living God, breathe on these words. Thank you. I ask that you cause them to come alive. There are specific instructions that you are giving to every single one of us here. And I pray that everyone will receive the instruction that you have for them. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. And those who believe said amen. amen. Come on, clap to the Lord if you're letting me.